we're here to protect you and the, and the ones that you love. It's a good feeling to know that our efforts aren't going unnoticed. It actually brought tears to my eyes to know that we have this support. You're welcome. I must just say, you're welcome. It's stressful, but we're not going anywhere. Welcome to another edition of Bucknell Men's Golf Through the Decades. Tonight we had a decade in the 1980s. We've got an outstanding alum, Rob Wagner, joining us, along with one of our current student athletes, Jason Lowater, and our current head coach, Mike Binney. My name's Todd Newcomb, and I want to thank you for joining. I want to thank Geisinger as our sponsor for tonight's edition of Through the Decades. Geisinger does a great job with our student athletes here at Bucknell day in and day out. And of course, they've been very busy and extremely helpful throughout the entire pandemic. So we thank Geisinger for all they do for Bucknell and the local community. Uh, I want to introduce Rob and then I'll turn it over to coach. So Rob is from the class of 1981 and he was a four-year letter winner for the Bison. His top individual finish at the ECC championships was sixth in 1981. He won the Bucknell Invitational also in that very same year, 1981, and he held the team's low scoring average also in the spring of 1981. So we welcome Rob, and Jason is a junior from Rochester, New York, and a current member of the Bucknell Men's Golf Program, and we welcome Jason to the call. Coach, I'm going to kick it to you, and if we have another guest join, we will introduce that person when they come on board. All right. Thanks, Todd. So, Rob, I'm just going to kind of kick these uh, questions to you. Um, talk as much or as little as you want about each one. And then I'll bring in Jason and he's just going to ask a couple of questions about uh, networking and uh, experience here at Bucknell. And if you could add any words of wisdom or sage advice for his time here at Bucknell. So just in the very beginning, just kind of share with us from the time you left Bucknell to the day we're sitting here now, what, what have you been up to? Where you've been living? How's the family? Uh, just, just bring us up to speed on, um, on Rob Net Wagner's world. All right. Uh, well, currently I live in Pittsburgh where I was born and raised. Uh, right now I, I work for a construction company here in town and I, I manage and lease commercial office buildings that we own in our small portfolio of uh, commercial office buildings. Uh, I'm married for 31 years and have three three daughters grown daughters that are graduated and are all out in the real world and uh that's what i was telling jason my one daughter went to university of rochester so we're sort of familiar with with that area for for a number of years obviously so it's about I'm it gonna, i'm gonna have to get some uh, advice from you i've got three daughters as well and not quite as far along in the path, so maybe you can give me some advice. Um, we just got one. One just got engaged just two okay. weeks ago, so it's like the beginning of the end. I'm I'm uh, I'm fearful of the three weddings that I'm going to have to uh, <laughs> pony up for, but uh, that's a discussion for another day. Um, if you could just uh, tell us ultimately how you ended up uh, choosing to come to and play golf at uh, Bucknell, how'd that all transpire? Well, uh, our, we have a pretty strong family history at, at Bucknell. My parents went to Bucknell. My older brother went to Bucknell. So as a, and my grandfather lived in Lewisburg. So, and uh, as a matter of fact, he was, I was just talking to you earlier about, he was one of the founding members of the Lewis, of the Bucknell golf course. So uh, we have that strong history. Uh, but whenever I was, you know, in high school, thinking about schools, that was sort of a like a no brainer. It was always a dream. It was always, you know, just loved it up there. But uh, as a typical, so I was thinking about it as a typical teenager, though, you know, I wanted to do something t different. And uh, so I went to, I was thinking about Lehigh believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, and, and traveled over there, met with the coach and of course, Sauk and Valley, you know, was, was beautiful. And that's, that was one of the big pluses over there, but you know, uh, when they had to visit and everything like that, meeting with the coach, meeting with a couple of the players that sort of, uh, 
comparing them to Coach Jeff Rank, it was just night and day. And so it was it was obvious you go with your first, you know, your first love. And so and I was lucky enough to be able to to go to Bucknell and it was fabulous. No, no regrets. It was is everything. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm going to flip the uh, switch here and give it over to Jason and let him ask his the two questions that he's been dutifully studying for. So, Jason, if you would take her away and just. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> firstly, uh, what advice would you give me or any of the other players that are uh, in our program today about the college golf experience at Bucknell? Uh, there's uh, there's a lot of things. Uh, Especially, I, I understand your program that you're in is pretty strenuous, but uh, I think the biggest thing is, you know, still have fun. You, you know, this is a time of your life right now. I mean, a lot of people you get so serious, you get so worked up about, you know, playing golf, about your schoolwork. And uh, you still got to have a little bit of fun there and do both. Uh, I was a, an engineering major at Bucknell, so there wasn't much time, as you know, because you're in the same ballpark there. You know, it's just all I did was golf and then work. And I and I, I joined a fraternity also, which you know was a was a good release, but uh, there wasn't much time for all that, and uh, I wouldn't change it for the world but you you got you got to have that balance and that time management that you'll learn if you didn't already you by now you've already learned it and uh golf being year long sport there's no time off but uh if you can just learn to balance everything take advantage of the camaraderie of the team that's uh that was the, the most fun is, you know, golf is such an individual sport, but when you're part of that team, it makes it a lot of fun. And uh, I was lucky enough to be with coach, you know, Jeff Rank. I don't know if you've met him at all or whatever, but he, he definitely made it interesting and, and fun and, and uh, made it a team, team event, which which, which was great. And you, you learn that in life to somehow to work together to, to achieve your goal. Uh, but that's the biggest thing is you got to have fun. You know, you got to relax. You got, these are the four best years of your life and don't let it slip by it too quickly. And then take advantage of, you know, the Bucknell, the, the atmosphere there. We were lucky enough to, to, to uh, to work and play with uh, the townspeople, we uh, Jeff arranged matches with with the members of, of of the golf course and playing with professors. You know, it's that, that, I mean, you you don't get that anywhere else. I don't think, and and being in that community up there. So make sure you take advantage of that, uh, and you'll just you'll just you'll be amazed at the people you you stumble in that you meet. I mean, that's, that's what's great about the game of golf. You'll, you'll, you'll lasting relationships for the rest of your life. So I guess that's my biggest thing is just make sure you have fun. Yeah, absolutely. I guess uh, my follow up to that would be moving forward. You know, what kind of advice do you have about, about networking and finding the right job after graduation from Bucknell? Uh, like I said, I mean, golf's a great game to, to inherently network. Uh, but the biggest thing is make sure you, uh, you know, find something you like. And uh, they always said, I remember when my kids were looking at colleges or whatever, they said for your major and everything like that, find your passion. That was always the the buzzwords that we always heard or whatever, but, you know, just, just make sure you find what you like 
and then you never have to work a day in your life. That old adage too. And uh, you'll you'll stumble into your network, and it's it's hard. It's hard. You got to really work at it. It's uh, I'm sure with all your your and and the other teams that you play against, you'll run into that. Being in the Patriot League, you're in with quality schools and and just stay in contact with those people. That, that's the best thing. You'll 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 have these friends for your life, believe it or not. I, I stumble into people all the time, you know, playing playing golf in tournaments now as an as an old man or whatever. Uh, I've run into this guy that I used to play with against Delaware, you know, playing tournaments against him, and it's it's <clears throat> it, it, it's crazy, but. Uh, and you'll never, you, you know, your first job, your second job, your third job, you know, it might not be the right thing. It might not be what you want or whatever, but don't hesitate admitting that you might have made a mistake by taking this job or that job. Uh, and just don't hesitate moving on to something else. Uh, you know, it seems like you really have your act together with everything, but things fall into place, you know, and just, just keep working, just keep working for you to get this far. You obviously work pretty hard. So keep it going. You, know, you can never stop and rely on your, on coach Benny. I mean, and even Todd and stuff like that. That's, that's what's great about Bucknell. You, you get to meet all these great people that just will help you believe it or not. That's, that's fabulous. So Rely on them, <laughs> badger them. So, Jason, oh, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sir. No, that's I'm fine. Uh, Jason just and I just literally had these conversations recently, and uh, um, and asked me about a little bit of networking, and and sent me his first draft of his uh, resume and cover letter because he has an interesting um, um, kind of choice of of internships that he'd like to do. And Jason, if you could just go ahead and share what you've been talking to me about for the, uh, for the audience, not so much to Todd and Rob, because I've already explained it to them, but go ahead and repeat it. What you were telling me your kind of dream internship would be uh, for the, for those sure. that would be Go ahead. So. I'll yeah. Go. So um, I, I find numbers and using numbers for various things, pretty interesting um, with golf and other sports. Um, especially including baseball. I played baseball for a long time when I was a kid. Um, I still have a great passion for baseball and I have a lot of um, interesting ideas about how to use data and numbers to help teams get better. I don't know what they do right now, but I think that that's a, a field that I would like to be a part of very much. Um, like a couple of the ideas I have would be just like trying to optimize every single pitch like with a a game theory type of approach so using data from the pitcher and from the hitter and looking at the situation that you want so you can try to find the exact pitch that um, maximizes what the probability of what you want to happen and you can look at you know how much how likely is it that other things are going to happen if you throw this pitch and try to you can try to count for everything that you can uh, at least based on the numbers and try to do that. And also maybe at some point trying to quantify psychological aspects. You know, there's a lot of um, news around taking out the pitcher in game six of the World Series this past year. So maybe looking at things like that and how that could play a role in a statistical model. I find that type of stuff really interesting. Um, and Coach has been great with uh, helping me connect with a couple of alums and try to figure out things I might be able to do next summer. I had no idea what our alumni base might have, but uh, I reached out to Frank Brown and uh, Frank's best friend or one of his best friends works for the owner of the, the, the New York Mets. And so I was able to give Frank uh, Jason's uh, cover letter and resume. Um, he said it was fine. You didn't have to worry about making any revisions to it. Um, so he's going to pass that on and who knows, and there, and there is 
the quintessential example of the Bucknell alumni ne network, if that comes to fruition, or even if it doesn't, but it's those kind of things and those kind of connections that really uh, puts uh, Bucknell uh, above the rest. I was blown away by the networking or the network of, of the Bucknell alumni when I got here. And it's uh, certainly alive and well in just about every major city in the United States. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Um, getting back to the questions, Rob, if you could take us, um, yeah, okay, this is a good one. Uh, tell us about your most memorable experience or give me a couple of stories of most memorable experiences as being part of the Bucknell Golf Program. Oh, there's, a, there's a lot there. Um, <laughs> I guess golf-wise, golf-wise, I guess uh, most memorable for me was uh, being lucky enough to be selected to play in the NCAA, you know, championships twice, you know, my sophomore and senior year, which uh, I think just, just my brother and I are the only ones in, that actually have gone to the tournament twice. Uh, so that was basically the most memorable, the most exciting golf wise being out there with, you know, Fred Couples, Bob Tway, Willie Wood, those guys we went to Stanford my senior year and uh, down to Wake Forest my sophomore year. Uh, and then uh, I think uh, just the whole experience, uh, getting to play at the Military Academy in, in Annapolis, I mean, that was, that was fabulous um, when we play, we, and we play there every year. Uh, at the military academy, we, you know, we would we, we ate in the the mess hall a couple times. That that was so impressive. And then down at Annapolis, we, uh, you know, we got to stay in the barracks, which you know it was impressive. It wasn't very nice, but it was impressive. Uh, I got to tell you a story with uh, down there at Annapolis. You saying Frank Brown, Frank Brown and Mike Schutz were my were seniors whenever I was a freshman. So they were my fearless leaders. You know, they're I probably wouldn't have gotten through Bucknell without Mike Schutz, uh, you know, getting me through English. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't he, I couldn't write. And, uh, and he, 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 he told Jeff, he Jeff told Jeff that I wasn't going to make it. And, uh, but he, he helped me, he, he, he got me through. And, uh, but they were my freshman year. I was like, at that time was the only freshman travel down there down to the military Academy and we're staying in the barracks. So, uh, Jeff or Mike and Frank Brown grabbed me aside and we're in these barracks and they say, Rob, you're a freshman. You got to do. You got to do this. This is right here. Is have is Doug Stock's bed. That's, this is where Doug Stock, another guy on the team. This is his bed. You got to. Have you ever heard of short sheeting? Some. Oh yeah. Something? <laughs> uh, they go. You got to short sheet yeah. Doug Stock's bed. I I didn't know what short sheeting was, and they explained it to me. So. I flipped up the sheets in the bottom there and curled them up. And they said, and sprinkle some sand down in there. We sprinkled sand down in there. And uh, I go, okay, you know, I'm a freshman and so naive and just, I got to do, I mean, they made me pick up all the shag balls all the time. So it's like, this was just another thing I had to do. So I, you know, I did it and everything. I came back to them. I go, okay, it's done. It's done. It's done. And they go, okay, good. So, Late that night, we're, we're all cr exhausted and stuff. And we go back, we go to the barracks. And uh, all of a sudden, I see Stocky climbing in this other bed. And uh, I, went, I, I didn't know what was going on. And then, don't you know, Coach Rank goes into the bed that I short sheeted. And if you don't, I don't know if you know, Co if Jason knows Jeff or whatever, but. He's as tall as you are. He's six five, 
you know, whatever. And he slides into there and he just like screams and yells and stuff, wakes up the whole barracks down there. And it was just like, uh oh. And uh, that was that, <laughs> that was one of my indoctrinations. Thanks to Frank Brown and and Mike Schutz. But uh, those are just some of this stuff that, you know, being involved with Coach Rank and stuff, kept it all light and stuff like that. And, uh, but we were serious when we had to be serious, so. Who was the teammate that you admired the most, um, classmate or not, but the, the guy or the couple of guys in the four years you were there that uh, you looked up to the most? Uh, uh, there was, uh, I really, I mean, everyone, I mean, that's why I was so lucky. And Jason, you got to be lucky too with the quality of people that are on the team. Uh, I mean, from, I could name, you know, I could name them all. Doug Stock, Dave Richards, Rick Kramer came in and after he won the state junior, Mike Stoyla, Jeff Buley, who we were trying to get on the line, uh, and Bill Francis, you know, but he, he, I guess he wasn't there. But I guess the two that stand out that like most influential for me was probably Mike Schutz and Frank Brown, you Good know, being Brown. a freshman and they were seniors. And uh, like, like I said, Mike Schutz got me through English. I mean, I, I never forget freshman year going in there. I'm an engineering major, so, you know, I don't need English. Or whatever. <laughs> Luckily, I only had to take one class. And uh, when I went into that English class and had to write my first paper, and they said, you know, just uh, you know, maximum of 15 pages. 15 pages. I, that's, a, that's a lot of writing. That's a lot of writing. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't read books that long. You know? And so Mike, Mike, read my first paper, proofread my first paper and it didn't go too well. So, so he, he got me through that. I think, I think I made, I think I actually got a C in it. So that was, that was lucky. So, but that was my only English guy I decided to take. So I was clear for the, the next four years. Okay. Um, I just throw this off for Jason and Todd. Do you, either one of you have a, a question that's not on the script that you guys would like to ask Rob and, just kind of. I guess uh, you say you're from Pittsburgh. Correct. Yeah. How do you feel about the uh, Steelers this year? I don't know. They're not. <laughs> I think they're. I think they're falling. <laughs> the ship might be sinking or whatever. No, I think that they they're fine. They got some important injuries that are putting them back, but uh, I think they'll they'll come through. Whatever it takes is what they they always say. I think. They'll come back. They'll be back. So, I mean, they're 11 and 2. How can you complain about 11 and 2? Can't well, complain. Well, can. <laughs> Pat, welcome aboard. All right. So let me introduce our uh, newest guest checking in right now. For those of you at home, it's Pat Moylan from the class of 1989. Pat was a four-year letter winner in the golf program, and his top individual finish at the ECC championships was fourth in 1987. He held the team's low scoring average in the fall of 1985 and 1987. And he was also a three-year letter winner on the Bucknell men's basketball team. So I wanna welcome Pat to the call. And Pat, if you can take yourself off mute, we'll make it work and we'll have some questions for you. Coach Benny and Jason will ask you a few, some that- uh, me. There we go. Sorry right, about that. <laughs> Stuff forced to- what well, was to be an in-person board meeting into a Zoom meeting, and you know how long, much, and uh, bad connections. Everyone's talking over each other. It was awful. <laughs> anyway, good to see all you guys. How's everyone going? Good? Good, good. Very good, very good, Pat. Glad you could join us. Um, hey, thank you. We've been running through the questions with Rob, and we'll just kind of segue right into that, and I'll start asking you if you're okay with it, and just uh, – um, ask you uh, to share some of your great memories here at Bucknell and up, just update us on where Pat Moylan is these days from the time you left Bucknell to now, what have you been up to for the last 
X amount of years, 30 plus years. Give us. You really needed to go there, did you? <laughs> just give us a snapshot. That's all. <laughs> um, well, uh, shortly after, um, shortly after leaving Bucknell, I was uh, very active in golf heavily. Uh, thought I was actually going to play, play it for a living, continue on. And then, um, uh, life got in the way, got married and said, you know what, maybe not. And everything was good. So I, I was working for the Navy at the time. And, uh, so I had really flexible hours to get to the golf course every day to practice by like two 30 and, uh, got out of that. And then the last now fast forward, Jesus, 29 years of marriage and almost 30, I've got a couple kids and uh, one's graduated college and, uh, Another one's a junior at Clemson, uh, playing, moved to Delaware, uh, coach, uh, have been coaching my high school golf team for the last few years from, from DC, but now that travel has been kind of tough. I'm actually the head coach of a, of a prep school varsity basketball team down here in the, the Eastern shore area. So I've been doing that, but that's been put on hold thanks to COVID. Um, and as myself, I've, you know, I've just been working my tail off for the last 15, 20 years. I'm in the, I'm in the mortgage industry. So I've been busier, busier in hell in the last 15 months. Thank God, <laughs> knock on wood. Uh, my golf game sucks since what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I've had, uh, Christ, uh, the last four years, I think I've had five surgeries I've had a total, total knee replacement, another one that's supposed to be replaced, and a, and a uh, rotator cuff. So uh, I'm, I'm on the – when it comes to playing golf, I'm going to do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> you're, you're, you're Steve Austin, the bionic man. <laughs> I've got more titanium in me than, I'm, than someone should have at age 53, to be honest with you, Mike. <laughs> So. Um, so, so tell us how you juggled basketball and golf. That's an interesting combination. Um, give us a, give us a, a kind of, how did you do it? How did you work that through? Well, not only did I juggle that, I was also a mechanical engineer. So, um, I can tell you, I, in retrospect, may have bitten off more than I could chew, but, uh, <laughs> okay. I got to school. I, I get to school early because we started our, the fall golf program started a couple weeks before school started. And, um, and then as soon as the fall season ended, basketball season started, and as soon as basketball season ended, spring season start, got, started. And at the end of the year, I had about two and a half, three weeks where all I had to do was study. And, um, and the only reason I made it through that time was because of, um, God, it's interesting you asked this question. Uh, the tremendous man, Tommy Thompson, because he was, uh, he was the golf coach and he was also the assistant basketball coach. If it had not been for Tommy Thompson, there was no way in hell I'd have been able to make it through. But I love that man like a father. He was the best. He was the best. And his wife, Robin, we used to tease him. He had, but he was, I think he was engaged for Todd. What was it? 15, 18 years, 20 years like forever <laughs> before he got married. Yeah. And, uh, and Todd said, T, what are you doing? He goes, I just want to make sure Pat, I just want to make sure. <laughs> he was, so if it wasn't for him and then, uh, you know, it did, you, you get through it. Um, you, your friendships, you know, it would bug Mills, ironically was, you know, I mean, it's a big school, but a little, I mean, no, it's a little school that felt big at times, but it's it just the camaraderie between people. I remember my, you know, I was lucky it, it, having a, having a golf teammates and basketball teammates. I was a GDI, you know, the goddamn independent. I didn't need to join a fraternity because I could get, you know, I, I had, my basketball mates were, were, uh, Sigma Chi's and, um, there was a there, Sigma Chi's and Land McKay, John Watson, uh, he was in Land McKay. Most of them were SIGs. Most of the basketball team were SIGs. My roommates, uh, were all SIGs. I was fortunate. I lived with upperclassmen every year, but my, 
my freshman year, my sophomore year, I lived with some people downtown right next to the Bull Run Inn, which was great. And then I, my junior and senior year moved back in with my freshman mates from my hall and lived on St. Catherine Street. And um, so we lived in a house there. And so those guys, and then having, and, and of course my, my basketball teammates, I mean, I, I don't know, Todd Duca might remember this. Um, when our 89 graduating class had two academic All-Americans playing basketball in Mike right. Butts and uh, Bo Hyde. Yep. So Mike Butts was my always roommate. He was my mechanical engineering person. We always, you know, whenever we traveled, we studied together and all that kind of stuff. And then, and my golf teammates, I had uh, my had my team friends. They were they were engineers too. So my only drawback, I don't know if you ever remember uh, Todd. You might Scott Paris. <laughs> yeah, sure. I wish I had followed his his advice. He said, "Why in the, no? You got to get out of engineering. Just transfer the business school. It's a hell of a lot more fun. <laughs> it's way more fun than freaking engineering. You don't want to do that. It's too hard." I'm like, ah, I'm already into this two and a half years, man. I can't quit now. Besides, my father would kill me. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. anyway, and then afterwards, when I finally got out of there, I wanted to kill my father. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, you should have known better. So, anyway, but I got out of college. I worked for the Department of the Navy for about eight years and then went and then Trent got out, you know, in a weird time back in the early 90s mid nineties, got out and got out of that, but kept playing golf. I mean, you know, so Bucknell was interesting. I, and you know, my father always says best thing that came from me out of Bucknell besides some of the friends that I have was like, well, I met my wife there and 29 years later, still married to her. So. Awesome. Awesome. Jason, if you could uh, go ahead and just kind of repeat what you did with um, Rob and uh, hit up uh, Pat for his uh, sage advice. For sure. So uh, what advice would you give me or any of the other guys on the team right now um, about the college golf experience at Bucknell? Well, as you know, when, you know, golf is a <coughs> golf is a, is a unique sport when it comes to, you know, as individual of a sport it is and team sport, a team sport when you're on a team like that, you know, you're out there by yourself. You can't, you can't put your fist up and get sub four. You know, when things aren't going well, okay, and you learn from that, but you experience, you share those same feelings golfing wise with your teammates that you have this, you know, you're on an island, but you're not on an island. You know, your teammates are going through the same thing and, and the camaraderie that you have when you're practicing and when you're traveling and, and you're with each other all the time is that you share the kind of the mental struggles because golf is such a mental game, you know, and it's all about, you know, getting through those, helping each other not get down. And that's what I remember, you know, when in 1987, we won a conference championship. I think it was the first one or first one in a long time. I don't know. Todd might help me out there. And, um, and it, it was a, uh, it was, well, it was just, it was unique because we had a, we had a breadth of players, um, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors. We, we had a group. It wasn't just a, a soul. So we had, we had upperclassmen and, and lower classmen that were all participating in this. And so there was just a lot of, you know, Talking it through, talking through the, just the challenges of like golf, it, you know, because golf is a challenging game. I hate to say it. I mean, it's, it, we used to call ourselves varsity hobbyists sometimes because it was like, no one wants to play this actually as a sport because it's, it's too, it's drives people nuts. Um, but I think the college golf experience at Bucknell that we had was just, it's unique. You know, Bucknell's obviously it's a really, <laughs> it's a tough academic school. So you're already struggling enough there to get through, you know, getting your degree. It's, it's not an easy, it's not a cakewalk school. And then you're, you're also not in, you're not playing in the greatest of elements. I mean, I, we play golf tournaments in Colgate. We play golf tournaments in Bucknell where it actually started snowing. 
I mean, who wants to play in the snow? And, um, and so it's just unique, but it, we were different. You know, look, we weren't, I'm not going to lie. We weren't, uh, and, and I got to be honest with you, you guys, what I see coming out of Bucknell Golf right now, couldn't carry y'all's bag. But, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, it was, it was a different experience. And it was, it was, it was challenging. When we played some good schools. And then when we had that success in 87, when we won, won the conference championship, and we won, played at Navy and, uh, I'll never forget when we played at Navy and had a, such a, a top five finish, I think it was, was unheard of. Coming right back from spring break where, you know, we go from snow, spring break, and now we're back in snow. And, uh, you know, I, it just, it was just a unique experience in, the, in that it was uh, back when we were playing, guys were, you know, obviously totally looking about their careers and everything else. They weren't as talented as you guys are go playing golf but you know it was just that unique experience of being a bucknellian playing golf traveling being together uh and understanding how difficult the athletics uh, academics were that you know golf hey come on don't take it too seriously it's still a game you're supposed to enjoy it and it's college and you get to play golf in college any anytime you get to play a, a division one sport and it's that's gravy that's awesome that championship in 87 was the first one Bucknell won since 1973. So they won in 73, and then the next one was 87. And, and, and it, uh, Todd, in, eight, in, in 73, who was the coach then? Do you know? Uh, was that Brad? Was it Brad Tufts? It might have been Brad Tufts. Okay, who at the time then became the sports information director yep. when Tommy Thompson took it over. And uh, and all I can say, I can say one thing about <laughs> I can say one thing about my my golf experience at Bucknell. There was never a better time. And everyone used to bitch and moan about this, pardon me, that spring break, we were on a golf trip, right? And we were at Pinehurst. And back in 19... 19- the eighties Pinehurst was as dead as Lewisburg in the eighties. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so we stayed at this place called the Magnolia Inn. And the greatest part about the Magnolia Inn was the, and I can't remember her name right now. And I can't remember. I can't believe I can't remember her name right now. She was the innkeeper. We had the entire upstairs of this plantation house. It was like two bedrooms six cots and two bathrooms we got to go downstairs in the morning and she'd make us this amazing breakfast and then we would go out and we would play pinehurst number two number seven number six number five number number two number seven number six number five two and then we'd come home and it was like ah oh, oh damn it, i can't remember her name it's gonna come to me she didn't have dinner for us well of course not because she was asleep <laughs> she, <laughs> she was in bed and there was nothing to do in pinehurst in the 80s we found our way around. We found our way. We would find our way around. But I tell you, the Magnolia Inn, I have a picture. I should send it. I sent it to my mates, a couple guys. I said, you're not going to believe this. I was down in Pinehurst in spring break about a year and a half, not this year, the year before. And I took a picture in front of the Magnolia Inn. And I, and I sent it to the guys. I'm like, guess where I'm standing? And they were like, son of a bitch, you got to be <laughs> kidding me. I said, they're like, it's still there. I said, not only is it still there. The, the breakfast room is now a pub. Damn it. <laughs> so I'll I tell you, that spring break trip, as much as we complained about the fact that we weren't, you know, doing what other college kids do on spring break, uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. We had a great time. Again, it's all about building friendships when you're playing college golf at a certain level. It's all about those friendships you build. And even if you're not in touch with each other, 20, 30 years later, you remember those days. You'll never forget them. They're the best. Anything else? <laughs> hello, hello, I, you. You, I got to unmute myself. So Pat, segueing off of that, if you could just tell us, in the interest of time, we'll make this the last question. If you could tell us uh, the teammate that you admired most, who you looked up to the most and, and, and 
you know, wanted to be the most liked. So give us your best well, shot. Um, when I was, when I was a freshman, there was, there was a guy, uh, Eric Hager, uh, was, what he was, was, was more of a mentor than any, I mean, he was just, you know, it was, it was hard. I was a freshman. I mean, like I said, I started out, you know, I had a busy season and, and I was kind of doing, you know, the whole engineering golf and basketball thing, but Eric Hager, um, just, he was a senior when I was a freshman and he just kind of put his arm around me and, and, and kind of led me through those first year, those first, especially those first tournaments when you're nervous as heck, you want to do well, you know, you've, you've had a really good high school career. You've had a good junior golf career, but now you're playing in college and, and you just, you know, he was the guy that would help me relax and, and just say, Hey, just, just, you know, just relax. You've got the talent to do it. You can do it. Just, just relax and play. Okay. And, um, you know, I, it, it was just, that's the kind of thing, you know, the upperclassmen just putting an arm around you and saying, Hey, relax and, and just play, just go about it and play. And it's, it's not the end of the world if things don't go your way. Don't beat yourself up. And he was awesome at that. Eric, uh, he has a positive attitude. He visits every year with his brother and plays in the uh, the Invitational here. Um, I grew up in the uh, in the the Boston area, and I moved to Philadelphia for two years of my life when I was in fourth and fifth grade and a little bit of sixth grade, and then moved away. And the the elementary school that I went to is the same one that Eric Hagar went to. And I met Eric Hagar in 1973 oh as a fourth grader. And I was friends with him. And fast forward 40 years later, 40 plus years later, I walk into the pro shop and Brian Kelly goes, hey, I would like you to meet one of your uh, one of the alums on the golf team, Eric Hagar. And I looked at him, I'm like, Eric, you, you don't know who I am. I, we went to Hillside Elementary School together. It was the well, I mean, that's son of a bitch. That's, that's, that was not scripted. I had no, no. idea. <laughs> no. I, I, I was, you know, and Eric and I, I've literally known him uh, since fourth grade. And we obviously didn't more in contact after I left in 1970, 77 or 76 or whenever it was I moved. But, wow. uh, you know, the, the uh, yeah, that was, that was amazing. And, uh, comes up every year with his brother and plays and we have a good old time. I always I have been, I've been telling, I've been telling folks for, I don't know, 10 years. I, I, and I, and I, and I'm, I'm, I'll be apologetic to the Mac. Every time I get these things, I say, I tell some folks, I'm like, you want to go have a really fun time. We should go to Lewisburg and play and play in the tournament at Bucknell. You cannot believe how neat this golf course is. And they're like, what? And I'm like, no, I'm telling you, it's the coolest little golf course. And I say little, it's, you know, it was always tough. You know, little because the greens are like this big and, yeah, and, you know, and, and it seemed like it was wide open, except that back when we were playing there, if you hit it off the fairway, there was only like five yards of rough. It was big fairways, five yards of rough, and then pine trees. And it would look from the tee, it would look pretty innocuous. Like, that's no big deal. Except that once you got into those pine trees, they were never trimmed up. Nope. You couldn't get it out. No. It was like you were in a. It was like you were in jail, <laughs> literally. <laughs> You're in the pine trees. You can't get the ball out of the pine trees. You just have to put it back out. You can't punch it. It was just awful. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. No. Um, anything else from the group that anybody wants to add before I turn it back over to Todd to uh, wrap things up? Jason, any uh, last comments? Jason, what year are you? I'm a junior right now. And Rob, when did you graduate? I graduated in 81. 81. All right. And did did Eric did Eric Hager by chance show up tonight? Did he was on the call? He couldn't. Uh, he couldn't he was, make it. Um, couldn't make it. Had a conflict. Well, he heard you were coming. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure he gets the link so he can watch it because uh, yeah he'll get a kick out of it. That's a great story, Mike. No idea. It was, it was unbelievable when I walked in. 
That's funny. I can't believe I can't believe you asked me that. And I'm telling you, Eric Hager and Eddie Fetz. I <laughs> and Tom Dorigo. Tom Dorigo was just a good fat friend. I, he, I thought I expected him to be on tonight, but you know, honestly, John Ingham, who I know has been in touch with you, Mike. I think anyway. From yeah, he's yeah. been he. We had organized um, a reunion uh, this fall, this October. Uh, to come in and we had Dorigo, uh, Ingham, Seabold, Steve Antonucci was coming, Spangenberg, Seabold, I think I said him. Um, All the guys I tried to get on this call. <laughs> I know, I know, I, I know. It's, uh, but we, it was all at Schmerler, yeah. So we were, Scott Parrish, um, who has the greatest job of all time. He does. <laughs> <He's> got, <laughs> what a great job he has. Um, but we were all hoping to get together there this past October. Hopefully we're going to do it again next October. I mean, I, I, I'm, 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 I hope so. I hope we can. That, that would be, that would be a lot of fun. I mean, that would be great to get back to all those you guys. Get the, you you so. have the run of the, uh, the, the, the golf center here. I always tell the alums when you come back as a group, just come on over here. This is your home away from home and get a little <laughs> taste of what the kids are enjoying these days. And uh, I was going to say the golf center. What the heck is that? And, well, it's a different the world room. now. Yeah, it's totally different. We have. I'm sitting in an office right behind this screen. Five yards from me is a tee box that's 90 by 30 yards deep, and it goes into the range. And we have four heated bays we can hit during snowstorms. An indoor putting studio. It's it's fabulous. So, yeah, you guys uh, come and have a taste of good life when you get back to Bucknell the next wow. time. You know, I might just I might just have to drag a group up there just to see that the hell that for Heck just yeah. for that. Heck That's yeah. insane. I mean <laughs> I'm thinking of the I'm thinking of nineteen eighty shit, nineteen eighty five getting dropped off after checking in the tracks. My mom and dad <laughs> dropped me off with my bag and you know, said goodbye and go practice. And there was the putting green, the driving range was across the road, you hit into a field. And, uh, and, ah, who was the head pro back then, Todd? Who was the head pro? Or, uh, come on, Mike, who was the head pro back in 85? Or, Rob, you know. What, uh, he was there forever. Harold Evans. Harold, Harold Evans. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Harold. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Pat, not, it, Pat, you had to pick up your own range balls, too. Yeah, you did. You had to go out. Yeah, you went out there with a shag bag. Yeah. You hit him, and then you went out and got him back, and you brought him back. <laughs> and and to get back to tracks, to get back to tracks, I got on a goddamn bicycle and, <laughs> and pedaled back with my bag on my shirt. Yeah, we didn't even have lockers to keep our bag over there. No, I you should, didn't. I, I should do a video tour of this just for the alarm. You really should. This, because this is uh, – Actually, I wonder if I could walk through the uh, facility sure. with the glue. Are you on your laptop, Mike? Yeah. I'm sure there's something yeah. up on YouTube already. If you, you could probably disconnect it and just walk around the facility. While he's doing that. Now, Mike, my story is not as good as yours, but talk about small world. I was talking to Ingham earlier today, and I found out his wife went to my high school. And now they're, you know, they're married and living in Bermuda. So you, you got to be kidding me. It's small world, yeah. Crazy. She lives around the corner from me. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Pat, you're you have an open invitation. So do you, Rob, and come back anytime. And you'll probably be pissed for the first five minutes and going, what the hell do they have here? You know, and, and oh I'm sure. Know. Well, you know, I had a, a <laughs> buddy of mine, son was uh talking or so a friend of his was looking to Buck Nell and and um I just was giving the numbers and I'm reading the the uh the newsletter and he's like and he says to me he goes oh my god are you serious he's like looking at these average scores and i go and i said yeah wasn't quite like that when we were there <laughs> wasn't quite like that and i but at least all we were pretty good at the time. Ah! all right guys well i'm going to turn my comments first to jason jason thanks so much for being on the, the night and um you know we're we're Right now, we've got the good news that you're, you know, you. Uh, if things don't change, you'll be playing in the spring, and we're excited about that. And 
we'll, we'll cheer you guys on when you go down to the Naval Academy later in the spring and you take the Patriot League championship on their home course. So best of luck with that. And Pat and okay. Rob, thanks so much for getting on and, and representing the 80s. Uh, appreciate what you guys have done tonight and as well as what you did while you were student athletes at Bucknell and, and maybe more importantly, what you've done since you left Bucknell. And, you know, that golf center that we're talking about right now didn't happen without the support of our alumni. So, and that's the case with all of our sports at Bucknell. The support that our alumni give our current student athletes makes our programs what they are. So thank you so much for that. And then for those of you at home that tuned in to watch tonight, thanks for doing so and go Bison.